Okay, hello, welcome to this weather update. It's around 7.30 on October 27th, 2019. A very muggy day, stormy day. Uh, and before I start off this video with a rant, News 12 didn't cover the storm. No, did they lead off with the storm? No, they led off with this. And they spent two or three minutes on talking about Trump and, and ISIS. How is this local news? It says right there, it's locals, local news gets. You know what? You know what to do. I'm hitting the button for the fail horn right now. I'm hitting it right now. Yep, that's for you, News 12, because you failed to do your job today covering local news. All right? They, they, team coverage. Team coverage. Team coverage. They spent three freaking minutes on this, reporting on this. Three freaking minutes just to show. They, it's like you just want to talk about Trump all the time. I don't care what he has to say. Nobody cares. You get to a certain demographic, and they only spent 30 seconds on the storm, mainly showing uh, this postal truck here that got damaged from the flood somewhere. There was a lot of flooding today across the island, but they spent 30 seconds talking about it. That's it. And the only thing they sent the reporter out for was the Suffolk County Marathon, which happened to take place, you can take a guess where it took place, on the South Shore. So it's obvious they're gearing to a certain demographic of white finance professionals, a.k.a. Wall Street. You might as well just change your name to as Wall Street as Wall Street News gets, because that's all you care about, News 12. And I don't look forward to having to get deal with getting News 12 in about two or three weeks when we lose Files 1, because Files 1 is a better job. You guys, all you care about is what these snobs want to hear, and we're tired of it. So now, let's talk about the weather. So let's take a look at the current weather outside right now. Uh... Very kind of muggy out there, still kind of muggy. We're going to look at some of the observations. We're going to look at the rainfall totals. Uh, it's starting to drop a little bit, 2.59, uh, because we have a northwest wind at 7, gusting to 17. However, uh, it was it, it really got really humid in the uh, early evening around, I would say, 4, 5, 6 o'clock. It was really just muggy as heck. Dew point got all the way up to 65, which is quite humid for October. Certainly not normal at all whatsoever. Uh, and I'm feeling got that humid all across. Well, it probably was even worse in New Jersey, I bet. Let's see what it was in New Jersey. Uh, we're going to go to Atlantic City. Worst spot. So it's still humid there, 2.65. The front hasn't even come through there yet. Oh, you look at the 2 point almost hit 70. Look at that. They hit 70 down there. Chances are Tom's River did get up to 70 degrees. It's still just really muggy out there. Uh, looking at the current conditions outside on the underground... We're going to look at some of these temperatures, too, and you'll see it's just very mild, very muggy out there, a very humid, disgusting kind of air mass across our area. And, it's, again, in New Jersey, it's even worse. We're dealing with temperatures around 70, and we flip it over and look at these dew points. You'll see you got dew points near 70 in certain areas in Tom's River, mid-60s near 70. You know, yeah, I have to put the air conditioner on because it's so humid. You shouldn't have to in October, but this is what it is now. Uh, with climate change. So, it's, yes, dew points around 60 degrees on Long Island, a little lower. You see the dry air trying to bleed in a little bit. We're going to look at the rainfalls on here, and then we're going to look at the rainfall, actual rainfall reports. You'll see most areas got over an inch of rain, uh, and they all kind of disappeared, waiting for them to fill back in. Uh, most of these are, most areas seem to have gotten about an inch and a half of rain uh, across our area. A good inch and a half across Long Island. Let's take a look out east where the numbers might be a little higher. Some uh, two-inch reports around Shoreham, um, generally one and a half inches all around as far as the island goes. Let's take a look at New Jersey. Um, actually, it got a little less. So we actually, they actually got off a little, a lot, a lot less actually there. Three quarters of an inch in certain areas, and then an inch in Lakewood, and then, uh, and then you get to Tom's River, and there's some localized higher amounts, 1.85. There's a 3.53. I don't think that's accurate. Um, but, oh, there's a couple of two-inch amounts here in Waretown. So it's possible some of these areas around Fork and River might have gotten a little more, like two inches maybe. Um, look at over New York City. New York City got a little less. Well, it depends on where you were. One point, uh, it looks like northeastern New Jersey got some two-plus-inch amounts. And a few here. There's a few in Queens, too. There's a 3.16-inch uh, amount around uh, these aren't official amounts, though, so uh, let's uh, look at the... I'm going to close this before it crashes my computer. Let's actually look at the official observations from the Weather Service. 
uh, and take a look and see what we have, all right? Because uh, it looks like we'll start with Connecticut. Uh, Westport, 2.59. So Connecticut got a little more rain. New Haven County, uh, you see 1.68. Uh, in uh, Bergen County, New Jersey, a two uh, two point zero five inch amount in Ridgewood, uh, West Orange, two point three seven, Harrison, one point four nine, Bloomingdale and Passaic County, two point two five. Uh, we go to New York. Uh, we have Muttontown, highest amount in Nassau County, one point five seven, Woodbury, one point five two, Carl Place, which is the closest site to Mineola, one point two five. Uh, Central Park 1.31, Orange County 1.31, uh, Queens County 1.35, Rockland County, Slotesburg 2.05, Suffolk County, Lake Ronkonkoma 1.74. Uh, I don't think the rain was completely over at this time though. Terryville 1.55, Farmingville 1.46. Uh, so again, Lake Ronkonkoma getting the highest amount. Westchester, Eastchester. A 2.33 inch amount there. So, generally, uh, we th around that one and a half inch, inch mark is what we uh, what I was expecting, and some isolated two inch amounts in there. So that's pretty much what we were expecting as far as the rainfall goes. Uh, let's go and take a look at the uh, uh, Twitter here. Let's see if there are any pictures here from. Yep, far far as the Avenue and Paramus did flood, so there was some street flooding around, uh, as we know. Uh, let me go and see if we can get some current public storm report, uh, public information statements on the uh, or storm reports on the uh, on, uh, as far as flooding or damage from flooding today. Uh, let's see if we can get some storm reports from that. There aren't any. Okay. Okay. So let's go look at the models now, and uh, we're gonna. The storm is now exiting the picture after dealing with uh, quite a bit of heavy rain there, and just. Yeah, yucky day today. Very yucky. And the wind gusts, too, were up there, too. It was very windy. We had some very windy conditions, too, as well. Uh, if we go and we go back to our observations here, I want to actually look at a couple of observations from Farmingdale and JFK in particular, as far as the winds go, and see uh, see what the wind gusts were like. Because we had some pretty strong wind gusts with that low-level jet. You had some 38-mile-an-hour gusts there, uh, right there. So pretty uh, intense gusts. That's at Farmingdale. Let me see JFK. It's JFK is right on the water, so I have a feeling maybe they had even higher wind gusts. Let's see what they have. Oh, it's going to Farmingdale again. Why is it going to Farmingdale when I'm clicking over Lindbrook? All right, there we go, Kennedy. So wind gusts. Let's see wind gusts here at Kennedy. Eh, actually stronger at Farmingdale. I'm sure that there were some isolated 40 to 50 mile an hour wind gusts too. We'll, we'll see if we can uh, uh, get them and see uh, uh, some reports on that. Anyway, uh, let's look at the models here and take a look and see what we have. So this storm is departing. We're going to have this weak high pressure for tomorrow. Uh, that moves offshore, and then we uh, get to see some chance of light precipitation and clouds on on Tuesday, and also lingering into Wednesday. And then we have our next rainstorm that's coming for possibly Halloween. So here is the next storm right here developing over. Uh, it's going to be like a similar type of setup. We got the ridge offshore, a strong low-level jet uh, from the tropics, spring tropical air up, and this rain could be heavy Halloween night into Friday morning. Uh, so and then this storm finally gets on out of here. So another one of these type of uh, deals again with the heavy rain and the wind possible. Another and that and that unfortunately looks like it would be hitting on Halloween. Uh, so uh, let's go and look at the. Uh, well, we're, we're worried about that storm when it hits. So I don't want to focus too much on it now. Um, let's uh, focus on the next couple of days here. You know, let's little focus on the skies when we can get these skies to clear out. So uh, we have clouds, uh, but for tomorrow, it should be a clear day, especially over New Jersey and most of Long Island, except maybe for the east end. Uh, and then we go into uh, Tuesday, and we got all those clouds and the chances of showers. Same thing Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the clouds linger, and then maybe, like I said, by later Friday we get out of it, and we have a nice Saturday, hopefully on tap. But that's like I said, that's a lo uh, that's out there, and that forecast can change, especially with timing. Timing can always change, but it looks like 
right now it looks like a Halloween. Uh, I'll go to 24-hour accumulate precip because it'll show you that the rain could be heavy. So you can see this is Tuesday into Wednesday where we, we could also get some rain. Not Nothing heavy, but another half inch perhaps. Uh, it's when we get into uh, the Thursday into Friday time frame. Look at this. We could have another soaker, an inch to two inches again uh, for Halloween. So another soaker. Uh, we've gone from the drought is over, so pretty much we're now in a wet pattern. Uh, that uh, we just keep getting these soakers time and time again. Uh, so uh, we'll go ahead and look at the kind of temperatures we can expect this week. Uh, here is Monday. We have temperatures in the uh, mid 60s, so it'll be maybe a little bit above normal, but a nice day. Temperatures Tuesday much cooler because of the rain and the clouds. Probably be drizzle and kind of nasty. Uh, same thing goes for thir uh, Wednesday. But you can see the temperatures starting to rise. The warm air is coming up ahead of that front, and then Thursday. We are, we're in the warm air here, mid-60s, uh, and Friday, and we get this real surge of warm air where it could go up to 70 degrees in the morning uh, before uh, the cool air comes in in the afternoon. Very strong, strong cold front uh, that, uh, that passes through, and then it gets much cooler after that. We have to deal with uh, all this warm air first, though, unfortunately. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at the dew points because we will get relief from these hum this, this humidity. So you can see there's that humidity we're in. That gets out of here probably around midnight or so. We start seeing it get out of here tomorrow. Dew points drop into the 40s, mid 40s, maybe to around 50. So it'll be comfortable out there. But the humidity starts rising again a little bit on Tuesday. Wednesday rises a little more. Thursday we really start seeing that tropical south flow, very strong south winds that will be coming up again with a low level jet. Dew points up into the mid 60s. It will be muggy, so you probably will have to put your air conditioner on on Halloween. Yes, which is crazy. You know, I mean, you you don't put your air conditioner on Halloween. Uh, you put your heat on on Halloween, but not this Halloween. Uh, and uh, here comes that real surge. And you look at how sharp that front is. This is a Friday morning around 8 a.m. Very humid conditions across the area, but just to the west, you see that really sharp front. That's going to come through, and uh, you can see uh, going to go from dew points in the mid and upper 60s to dew points in the upper 40s behind that front. So it's going to be a very strong frontal passage with that. You can see how strong of a frontal passage that's going to be. Um, let's go to the ICON model. I think it'll go out. Let's uh, take a look at this system on the ICON model now, right? So this is the ICON model, and the ICON model, you can see, it keeps us in the rain. Much of Thursday, really gets heavy Thursday night, and then another real batch of heavy stuff comes through Friday, uh, fr uh, like Friday morning, and then that's out of here. Probably by late morning, it's out of here. Um, that is what it looks like now. And as far as uh, next chance of precipitation, as far as light precipitation, that would be Tuesday, but it'd be fairly light. The real stuff, like I said, we have to worry about would be on uh, Halloween Thursday into Friday morning. That would be the worst of it. So, yeah, that, 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 that's the system. I'm not looking forward to it. Uh, I am not looking forward to it, that is for sure. But anyway, let's go back to the NAM, and we're going to look at the NAM uh, dew point levels. And uh, the NAM actually goes out all the way almost to Thursday, so we can look at the 12-kilometer NAM and see how things look as far as precipitation. So, again, there's that humidity. That's gone by the morning. It's gone probably after midnight. It starts dropping. Tomorrow, dew points drop. Comfortable day tomorrow. And then we start seeing more humidity again as we get into later Tuesday, into Wednesday. Uh, yeah, I know. It's crazy. I know it is. Um, let's look at this and see how much rain we would get as far as once we get past tomorrow into Tuesday. Uh, you could see a little bit more, uh, but it would just mainly be light precipitation. It wouldn't be heavy. The heavy stuff waits until Thursday. So. Uh, after this, the next substantial rain event will be Thursday, into Thursday night, into Friday morning. Uh, and now let's go to the NAM 3-kilometer and look at how that portrays the sky conditions for tomorrow. And hopefully we can get maybe a clear day out of it. See, we're a little concerned here. Oh, NAM seems to want to build this area of clouds off to the east of Long Island and maybe over Long Island itself a little bit and then rotate it kind of westward during the day and kind of clouds us over but may not that may not happen until much later in the afternoon so hopefully we can get a mostly sunny day out of this tomorrow before these clouds roll back in on us and that's just because of the east flow uh, that's going to be happening 
Uh, let me go to windy.com and look at the URL. I want to look at some other models here. We're going to look at the URL here on this model, and you can see uh, this is the wind. So look at some of these wind gusts here that were uh, that are occurring here over the. And then the, the we're done with the high winds, but again, very strong low-level jet over here from and right out from the tropics. Uh, and you can clearly see that low-level jet. It's very, uh, very evident. If we put it up to gusts, look at this. You have gusts over the water up to 60. The Cape's got to be getting hammered again. The Cape has got to be getting hammered again. In fact, we're going to have to look at power outage. Uh, U.S. take a look at uh, this as well. Uh, for our area, you can see we're done with the high winds. All right, so we're going to use this with the clouds. So we're going to see what, you know, how, what the URL does for us with the clouds tomorrow. So here is 8 a.m., 9 a.m. Has it clear over our area? Let's take a look at 1 p.m. So yeah, see what's doing? It's rotating these clouds back in at us around. So it's very possible it might just be sunny in the morning and then these clouds roll in on us probably 12, 1 o'clock, uh, and then the skies could become mostly cloudy after that. So that would kind of suck if that happens, but it might happen. We have the Yaro and the NAM agreeing that this would happen. Uh, and the GFS seems to be a little underdone on the clouds. And knowing the easterly flow, it wouldn't surprise me if, if we do see this cloud. Uh, so if you want to get the sun, you've got to get going early in the morning, 8, 9, 10 a.m. Uh, and again, mostly over New Jersey. So I'm not really expecting, it's not going to be a crystal clear day tomorrow, despite what some people are predicting. I, to me, it does not look like it's going to be a crystal clear day. There's going to be some clouds around say partly sunny, especially more toward the afternoon. The morning would be have more sunshine, more clouds in the afternoon. That's what I'm thinking with these models here. And these models have a good track record on predicting that. And that northeast wind, that would make sense to bring in these clouds in uh, into our area. So uh, next thing that we are going to do is take a look at that next storm for Halloween and see what it looks like on the Euro. Uh, you can see that strong south wind uh, and here, there we go. So 1 a.m. So when it gets worse, all right. So you have sustained winds 1 a.m. Friday morning, 25 miles an hour. And then if we throw the gusts in here, look at that, 44. So it could be really be stormy. Uh, and look at this, you have 46 mile an hour gusts again ahead of this front. You're going to even have some gusts into the 50s and 60s, perhaps a very strong low level jet event that's going to be occurring. And then we have that wind shift to the west, and we'll have strong westerly winds behind it. Uh, but the thing is that uh, not only we had that, but you're also going to have, if you look at the temperature, you'll see the kind of warmth that we may be dealing with uh, 6 p.m. on Thursday, 66. And then we get to that Friday morning, and I want to illustrate that, that, that warmth that's going to be coming up right ahead of that cold front. All right. The good thing is the Euro moves the front through early. So the Euro moves the front through early, so hopefully the worst of the rain occurs before people have to commute. Uh, we can get that through. Uh, but you can see ahead of it, it's really just disgusting air that's ahead of it. Uh, but then you can see that, that sharp front right there. If we go to the rain amount, we'll uh, go ahead and look at the rain. So uh, it has the rain behind it, though, on this one. So I don't know what it says. Well, it says 1 to 8 a.m. So I'm thinking, though, that heaviest rain would occur before the front, not after. So uh, that's what I'm thinking. But that is our next chance of rain. Uh, and this, another, this, could, this storm could be a doozy, so we're going to have to keep our eye on it. Uh, you know. All right, power out of US. And we'll look at this and see what's going on. All right. Uh, wow. Not much going on in our neck of the woods, but look at California. All right, this is going to be the other rant in this video. California. Pacific Gas and Electric uh, really is, yeah. Yeah, they have a million people without power right now. None of the other utilities have that many outages. It's just Pacific Gas and Electric because uh, they don't want to run their power system because they're worried it's going to start fires. Well, it's too late uh, because the Kincaid fire was started by them by a defective transmission tower. So now, you know, most of California, the Northern California, is in the dark right now. Except, for, look at this, except for San Francisco. This, and there are even some few people out there, too. Uh, and this is weather related because of the conditions that are going on out in California. So uh, you could see a, uh, 87. Look at all these outages. I mean, this is and all of these are just voluntary. They're shut offs. The, the, the PG&E has shut off power to almost a third of their customers. 
uh, you know, I have no words to describe Pacific Gas and Electric except the fact that the state of California needs to step in and do something because it's it's out of control. Um, it's out of control, Pacific Gas and Electric. They are, you know, people are going to start leaving California uh, very quickly uh, because you need to have power. This is a third world country. This state here, California, is a third world country. And it's partially thanks to Pacific Gas and Electric, and it's partially thanks to the government there. Who, I mean, if I was the governor, I'd say, "Look, we're not going to let you do this. We're going to send in the state guard and block you access to the transmission." What they do is they go in there, shutting off the power. We're going to stand in the way and stop them from doing it. All right, because you can't do that. You can't shut off the power to people for no freaking reason. They want to prevent fires, but you know what? Fires can be started by anything. And they already started the Kincaid fire because the transmission system was active. Because Pacific, Pacific Gas and Electric, is, is their infrastructure is some of the worst in the nation. And at this point, I think the state of California needs to come in and say, we're taking over right now, immediately. Send in the guards, t take over PG&E headquarters, and start fixing this. Because it's not acceptable. You can't have this in America. It's not a third world country. But Pacific Gas and Electric wants to make you think like it's a third world country. Now let's take a look at the weather conditions out in California, and then I'm going to wrap up this weather update. But I had to throw that other rant in there because um, it, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous what Pacific Gas and Electric is doing. And I feel so bad for the people that are losing everything, losing their food, losing everything. Let's take a look at the conditions. All right, this is San Jose. All right, we have a north wind at 20. Let's see what we got here. Uh, humidity is low. I mean, the conditions are favorable for wildfire spread. But, I mean, there have been Santa Ana winds before. Um, actually, let me go back. I want to go. There have been Santa Ana winds before, but you do have red flag warnings that are going from to 11 a.m. Pacific time on Monday. And uh, let's take a look at uh, some of these red flag warnings and take a look at some of these observations around the area. And climate change is going to trigger more of these things. Yes, so very dry air, 2.12, north wind to 21, gusting to 28. That is pretty bad. That is pretty bad. Let's let's take a look at Santa Rosa because this is in the area of the Kincaid fire. Uh, and that's I want to just look at look at Santa Rosa if we can. If it'll let me do it, doesn't want to do it. All right, Santa Rosa. So they have smoke and a north wind at 18, uh, uh, dew point at 12. So, and we have loads of people that have been evacuated. So I can understand shutting off the power in the areas that have been evacuated. But for everybody else, you're causing tremendous amount of economic loss. You're throwing people into poverty. Uh, and uh, we're going to go right now to PG&E's Twitter. Uh, you'll see here. Third consecutive severe wind event for Tuesday and Wednesday that it's going to impact again. So, literally, they're shutting off the power. They call this a public safety power shutoff. This is not the way you deal with the problems. If your power system can't handle the wind, especially the transmission system, you have a major problem on your hands. And, like I said, the state of California, they run their mouth, but they need to do something for the people in their state. The governor there needs to send in the state guard, take control of PG&E right now. Right now, send in the state guard and take over. Send, send them to the headquarters, send the guard in there, and have them turn the freaking power back on. Because it's not acceptable. But they're not doing that. They're not doing that. Um, so, and you can see there's a lots of people that are very angry about this. We can, we can, go, we can go look at this. Uh, people, maybe it's time we, uh, we, we discuss a court-ordered injunction. Yes, the government in California should be doing something for their people. All right? Instead of running their mouth, you send in the state guard and you take control of this situation immediately. This is one of these rare times when the government needs to come in and take over this utility right now, right this minute. Because this is completely unacceptable. So with that... I do wrap up this weather update. Let's pray for the people in California. They're going through a whole lot of headaches right now. And this could, fr this could really damage California's economy to the point of no return. Uh, and uh, the state needs to do something uh, immediately at this point. Enough running the mouth. The governor needs to come on the radio tomorrow and say, we're sending the state guard in to take over this utility immediately. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Anyway, that wraps up this update. Thank you for watching.